Google's Pixel phones over the years have only gotten better and better, and it's a shame not many people know the potential of these phones. The Google Pixel 7 makes a strong case for it to be your daily driver, delivering pretty much everything you could ask for a flagship smartphone while saving you literally hundreds of dollars versus its main competitors such as the iPhone 14 and the Samsung Galaxy S22. In this iteration of the regular Pixel line, Google expanded on small key features features that expand on their tried and true formula of focusing on computational prowess thanks to the upgraded in-house Tensor G2 chip and focusing on software improvements that distinguishes Pixel phones as, well, Google phones. They have a certain feel to them and especially with Google's extremely advanced AI and computational photography, it's one of the many reasons Google phones are starting to make a dent in the smartphone realm aiming to maybe one day dethrone the Apple-Samsung duopoly that dominates the market, at least here in the United States. Google certainly did not reinvent the wheel here, but they didn't have to. The Google Pixel 7 is poised to be a great contender for consumers, offering flagship specs, features, and all at a very attractive price point. If you're after a bigger screen and a telephoto zoom, check out my Pixel 7 Pro review that I just finished working on and released not that long ago. I'll attach a card at the top right in case you're interested and also links to not only that but also my Google Pixel 6a review in the video description. For its strengths, oh trust me there are many as we'll soon see, Google's newest handset is a very capable smartphone that deserves some clout. Stay tuned as we go into a deep dive on everything you need to know. So with that, let's go ahead and roll that intro. Alright boys and girls, so now with this review, this rounds out the entire and current Google Pixel family. The design language of all three phones is very distinct and very Google-like, thanks to the distinctive visor design that is indistinguishable from a mile away. We'll get into the design in just a second, as first we have to cover pricing and availability. First off, the Google Pixel 7 has an MSRP of $599. But as of the recording of this video, which is in late December, it is currently on sale and can commonly be found for $499 directly from Google. That $599 MSRP is the same price the Pixel 6 debuted at a year ago, securing Google a pricing advantage over its main rival competitors. Comparing this to something like the iPhone 14, for example, which starts at $799, as you can see, you'll end up saving upwards of $300 for a smartphone that essentially does everything the iPhone 14 can with certain key features that make it distinct. Your color choices are obsidian, snow, and this awesome lemongrass color, which is this light yet subtle and low key green color with a gold like aluminum visor that extends to the frame of the device. The base $499 model will give you 128 gigabytes of starting storage and it cannot be expanded. So make sure you choose the correct option for you. 128 gigs should be a decent amount for most people, but in case you take a ton of photos and videos or happen to download a bunch of apps, I do recommend upgrading to double that at 256 gigabytes for just $100 more. Like I said, the upgrades here are minimal and on the exterior, the design is only slightly tweaked and modified versus its predecessor. The main upgrades to the Google Pixel 7 is a slightly smaller build, a new selfie camera, a brighter screen, and improved Tensor G2 chipset under the hood. Starting with the design, you may note that in the hands, the Pixel 7 feels a bit more compact, and that's because it is, sporting a display that is only 0.1 of an inch smaller across the diagonal, coming down from a 6.4 display down to a 6.3 AMOLED display. Although the body is smaller, the phone is pretty hefty for its compact size, but I feel this is a good thing as it makes the phone feel more premium in the hands. The back glass is now made out of a stronger Gorilla Glass Victus, which should aid in better protection from accidental drops. Always a good thing. The wide strip that houses our camera, also being called the visor, is made of aluminum versus glass and seems to have more of a matte finish on the regular Pixel 7 and more of a brushed finish on the Pixel 7 Pro. Also, the frame is all one piece, so it makes the design look extremely sharp and attractive. It's IP68 water and dust resistant rated, so occasional spills here and there shouldn't be a huge cause for concern. So let's go back to that display, because even though it was reduced, I don't know, I quite like this size. It's the perfect middle ground, and best of all, I'm glad Google has stuck with an OLED panel 
despite the Pixel 7 being a relatively affordable smartphone in 2023. It has a 1080p resolution and an adaptive 90Hz refresh rate, just like its predecessor. While not as slick and smooth as the 120Hz display of the Pixel 7 Pro, you still will enjoy smoother and enjoyable scrolling that is noticeable, especially if you've been used to a 60Hz display up until this point. The display will dial back down to 60Hz whenever you're not interacting with it to conserve energy. The display is sharp enough offering some really nice contrast and accurate colors and realistically I just can't hate on it. I do wish it could have gone up to 120Hz but this screen will do most people just fine. The big change however is that Google promises the Pixel 7 to get significantly brighter which in turn helps with outdoors visibility a ton. It's capable of getting up to an alleged max brightness of 1400 nits, but this is only on paper and with adaptive brightness turned on in perfect conditions. Otherwise, the screen is typically under 1000 nits for sure, from my experience, and is plenty bright for most situations. The Google Pixel 7 biometric authentication comes in the form of both face and fingerprint unlock, with the Face ID sensor being located within our updated selfie camera, which is a hole punch design there at the top middle portion of our device, and the fingerprint reader is embedded underneath the display and works plenty fast, fast enough to not cause any noticeable lag. We've seen faster fingerprint readers elsewhere, sure, but honestly, this one here does the job just as well. For audio, the Pixel 7 has a stereo speaker setup with the earpiece doubling as the top speaker. The sound quality is pretty good, but I did find that certain genres of music, such as metal or rock, sound muddled with some of the instruments being drowned out at higher volumes and not as pronounced. Bass is also lagging a little and could do better, but then again, while watching movies or listening to music, it's likely most people will instead grab a pair of their favorite Bluetooth headphones anyway. Now touching up on performance, because it's one of our main upgrades, packing in the new Google Tensor G2, which is Google's in-house silicon, meaning they don't outsource their chipsets and instead develop and manufacture them themselves. This not only saves on cost, but allows Google to offer some pretty creative features for their users because of it. The Tensor G2 continues to lean heavily on a tensor processing unit that draws upon machine learning and artificial intelligence to provide Pixel owners with some rather unique experiences. Most of these tensor features include the eerie good voice to text which nails about 99% of what you're saying with ease. It's almost scary at times how good it is and it's able to distinguish pauses in your diction or certain inflections to automatically insert a question mark for you or insert a comma at the proper instance, just to name a few. Some of the other highly touted software features powered by the Tensor G2 is in the photography department, namely that new photo unblur feature that does exactly what its name implies unblurs photographs that appear shaky to produce a crisper and cleaner shot. Again, this is all largely due to the Tensor G2 and computational photography, but now let's discuss the actual hardware present. Here, cameras remain to be the Pixel's claim to fame, offering outstanding photography thanks due in part to both hardware and also all of that computational horsepower going on behind the scenes. However, on the Pixel 7, the camera hardware on the back is largely unchanged. Like the Pixel 6, the Pixel 7 offers you a 50 megapixel main camera sensor and a 12 megapixel ultra wide lens, each with the same exact apertures as last year. There is also no dedicated telephoto lens on the Pixel 7 as there is on the Pixel 7 Pro. But the new Tensor G2 does improve Google Super Res zoom capability to offer an 8x digital zoom. Overall, pictures come out splendid and always seem true to life. I tend to not focus on camera quality, especially on this Pixel 7 review, seeing as how there's not much new here. It still takes the same awesome photos and then are digitally processed with Google's own touch to produce some pretty spectacular photos. If you guys are interested in an in-depth camera comparison between this and the iPhone 14, just let me know down below. And then moving on to the camera on the front of the phone, the selfie camera, which is now improved and sees the biggest change. With an upgrade to a 10.8 megapixel sensor with a now much wider 92.8 degree field of view. In comparison, the Pixel 6's selfie camera was of an 8 megapixel quality and only had an 84 degree field of view. This should, in turn, allow you to squeeze in more people comfortably into your group selfie shots. And now, let's discuss performance. The Tensor G2 does power some very unique features, but still lags behind versus other competitors, seeing as how Google's main focus isn't on making the Pixel line a powerhouse behemoth, and rather opts to create a unique and one-of-a-kind experience across their family of products. Still though, 
The Tensor G2 is no slouch with modest Geekbench scores with single core coming in at 1,028 and for the multi-core side, I got 3,033, which isn't too impressive on paper and you should not rely on the Tensor G2 for the most demanding workloads. This isn't to say it's slow or laggy or anything of the sort. Its raw power is just pretty average, but the gap has been narrowing over the years with Google slowly starting to catch up. Gaming on most games plays pretty fluid, such as on apps like Asphalt 9 or Pokemon Go, but I did notice the occasional drop frame here or there. While not the best for ultimate mobile performance, it's still a great chipset which should offer support for several years to come. Finally, we'll go over battery life relatively quickly since while scripting this video, I actually was also simultaneously performing a battery drain test on the entire Google Pixel line. So far, it's a very tight race, and if you're excited for that video, make sure you don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. For now, I'll give you the facts about the battery found inside the Pixel 7, and you'll have to wait until my battery drain test to see how it compares to the rest of the lineup. This time around, Google opted for a smaller 4,355 mAh battery versus the 4,614 mAh battery found on the prior Pixel 6. Does that definitively mean that battery life is expected to be worse? Well, no, not entirely. Google promises the Tensor G2 to be more battery efficient, and thus, we should expect similar battery performance when comparing it to the Pixel 6. From my experience though, I'm not all too impressed as I barely get enough juice to last me the entire day, but by bedtime, the Pixel 7 is definitely in the red zone, and you'll likely need to recharge the device every single night. For its compact size though, I think it's great, and if you're okay with charging it every single night, then it should power through the whole day just fine. The Pixel 7 also does support for 30 watt quick charging, so that way you can get a quick 50% of juice in only 30 minutes if you have the required wall adapter. So in the end, what's my verdict? The Pixel 7 has a lot to offer and I think its highlight feature is that pretty attractive price point, especially while Google currently has it on sale for only $499, but some asterisks do accompany that statement. For one, it's a pretty basic phone. It's just regular with no real standout features that would really entice me to say, oh man, I absolutely need to get my hands on this phone. The Pixel 7 Pro offers a much bigger display, a 120Hz refresh rate, a pro-level triple rear camera system, and that lustrous polished enclosure made from 100% recycled aluminum. Thanks to the telephoto lens and an attractive price point of its own, the Pixel 7 Pro looks like the more compelling of the two phones, but there's no denying there's insane value going on here with the Pixel 7 phone. It's a reliable smartphone that's cheaper than most other phones in its class while offering Google's highly acclaimed suite of exclusive features that takes AI learning to a whole new level. I'm honestly excited to see what Apple pulls up its sleeve with the newest gen Google phones. Presumably they'll be named the Pixel 8 and Pixel 8 Pro, but until then we'll just have to wait. There's small improvements and refinements here that make this a great phone to pick up if you've ever been curious about the Google experience, but I wouldn't necessarily upgrade if you already own a Google Pixel 6. There's just not enough new features here to justify upgrading. But I definitely want to hear you guys' thoughts on this one. If you had to choose, would you prefer the iPhone 14 or the Pixel 7? Also, for those Google lovers, what's been your experience with Pixel phones over the years and do you see yourself sticking around with Google indefinitely? Let me know in the comments below. I really hope everyone has been staying warm and enjoying the holidays for all who celebrate. I'm wishing everyone an amazing time with family and friends around this season and until next time guys, I'm clocking out for now, but I cannot wait to catch you all in my next video.